Hello everyone and welcome to a new video. This video is going to be a bit different than my usual one since it's not necessarily a tutorial but it's about something that I wanted to build for a while now uh, which is a sorting algorithm visualizer. Of course uh, the project for this will be in the description. I uploaded to Git and I also uploaded the project to the finished framework for SDL since I did use um, our SDL framework to make this visualizer since um, it was set up in a way where it's pretty general, it doesn't really have to just make games, it can do other things too, so I ended up using it for that. And all of that is going to be on the Git. So over here I have two branches, one of them is the visualizer and the other is the master. The master is just the framework and then the visualizer contains the sorting algorithm visualizer. Okay. So now let's get into the visualizer and see what it looks like. And then after that, I will explain uh, briefly how it works and how to add more algorithms to it. So if I run it, as you can see here, we have uh, three algorithms for now. We have insertion sort, selection sort, and bubble sort. It also shows the comparisons that they do and the number of swaps. You can also press minus to slow it down and you can press plus to speed it back up. So let's slow one down, and then you can also click, left click on one of them to zoom in and see what it's doing. So for example, for insertion sort, it has the index that it's comparing, and then the index in front of it that it's comparing it to, and then shifting it over and over again until it finds an index that's uh, lower than it. And then selection sort, same idea, and uh, yeah, so this is pretty much what the visualizer looks like and how to use it. So let's go back to the code now and see how to add more algorithms to it. For example, right now we have three algorithms that we're pushing back into it. So we have insertion, selection, and bubble, but we don't have any other algorithms for now. So let's, for example, duplicate these three. So now we're going to have two of each. And then if we run it, as you can see, it updates the grid, so now it's three by three, and it added the other algorithms over here. We can click on them to zoom in on them, just like the other one, and yeah, that works as well. And yeah, so you can add more algorithms, you can add them here, and then it's just gonna visualize them. So let's take a look at one of these algorithm classes and see what they look like. So for example, let's go to insertion sort, and the idea here is that every algorithm class needs four functions to work. One of them is going to be get name, which is the name of the function uh, or the name of the algorithm, get comparisons, the number of comparisons it makes, and get swaps. Now, uh, the last one is sort step, and that's probably the most difficult one to make since usually when you're building a sorting algorithm, you're building, let's say for insertion sort, you can do like a nested for loop and loop over everything and that works. But to do it in uh, a visualizer, what you need to do is to limit it to a single step per update. And that's pretty much what I did here. So for insertion sort, for example, if I slow it down, we have insertion sort. The idea here is that a single step is a single comparison between the blue and then the yellow. And then if the blue is more than the yellow, or if the blue is less than the yellow, we swap them. If it's more than the yellow, we move on to the next index. And that's pretty much what it's doing. This is the only thing that's doing here where it's comparing them. And if it's less than it, it swaps them. Otherwise, it moves on to the next index. So we know that it's sorted and we move on. The other function that's not necessarily needed, but uh, we can use is update highlights. And update highlights, what it does is that it highlights the element that we're on right now. So for example, uh, we want to highlight our current index with light blue. So we're saying that J, which is the one that we're on right now, if the index that we're on is the same as J, make it current, which is light blue. If it's J minus one, which is the one before it, make it the comparison one, which is yellow. And then everything after J or everything before J, we know for sure it's sorted, so we can make it green, and everything else can be reset back to red. And that's pretty much it for the highlights. And that's it. You don't actually have to do anything in the visualizer itself. You just need to make 
uh, an algorithm class, you need to set up these four functions for it, update the highlights, and the visualizer should do the rest. And uh, yeah, um, a quick overview of the visualizer itself. It takes in a template. So every visualizer instance is attached to an algorithm. And that's why over here we make a visualizer, attach an algorithm to it, and then it handles the rest. But it doesn't really have to, you don't really have to edit anything in the visualizer itself. It should do that once you have these four functions set up in the algorithm that you have. So yeah, that's a pretty quick overview of how the visualizer works. Um, all of the code is there. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments and I will answer them. Also, if you do want a more detailed video, so my usual type of tutorials where I go line by line typing uh, and explaining what I'm doing in each class, let me know and I can make a video like that as well. But this is going to be it for uh, the visualizer. I did end up finding a memory leak in the framework itself while I was making this. Uh, and the memory leak was due to SDL git base path. Going to the documentation of this function, it assumes that the user needs to be the one freeing the path that comes back. So what I ended up doing is then SDL free on the base path to avoid the memory leak. And the way that I found out, found out was that in Visual Studio in the process memory, I saw that it was linearly going up as I was changing the comparison numbers here. So I figured that there was a memory leak somewhere and then I just tracked it down to it being this. And then when I went to the doc documentation, it was pretty clear that I missed that free of the freeing of the pointer. So uh, yeah, this is pretty much gonna be it for this video. In the description, I will leave the, uh, the link to the Git for the project so you can download it, give it a try. And if you do make other uh, algorithms added to the visualizer, do let me know and I'd love to see them. But this is going to be it for this video. Thank you very much for watching and I will see you in the next one.